New Zealand show, proudly brought to you by Harness Racing New Zealand, as well as all my great sponsors in NZB, Woodland Stud, and Harass the Trotters. Catching up again with Cam Kirkwood. Firstly, Cam, welcome back. Cheers, mate. It's a bit different today with the camera in front of us, but uh, yeah, good to be here. And the audio's working, mate, which makes it even better. I'd be disappointed if it wasn't. <laughs> it may not. Don't worry. I shouldn't be too cheeky. Uh, mate, I'm here back here to help promote, um, make people in Australia, I shouldn't say promote, but more or less make people in Australia aware of some of the great race meetings you've got. And this Sunday is a bumper-bumper meeting. Um, it's the Aces, which is a new, it's the first running of this actual race meeting as such, but um, some people might say it's the old jewels, but it's... Probably, I suppose, collectively, just a, a big, big Group 1 race meeting. It is, it is. It's a little bit like the jewels for the two-year-old races, um, but we've yeah, changed them around a little bit and we've given the two-year-old uh, trotting fillies their chance at some Group 1 status. So uh, moved it all around a wee bit and created this uh, cracker day of uh, eight Group 1s and a Group 3. Two derbies. Derbies, doesn't matter. You say derbies, that's it. But um, they've got great fields, paces and the trotters. Yeah, great, great fields. We've got two derbies. We've got an Oaks. We've got uh, free for alls for both gates. Uh, your two year olds, both sexes, both gates, group ones. It's, yeah, cracking racing. Um, before we start on that meeting, we will go through each of the races um, going on. I've also caught up, um, I'm going to catch up with a couple of the girls around the the Cadets series. Um, they're going to give us a little bit more in depth for that. There's a lot going on in New Zealand. Akarua on Saturday. Do I say it right? I said it wrong, didn't I, the way he's giggling? Oh, you, you battle away, but hey, we won't hold it against you. Well, tell me how you say it. Well, now you're going to make me say it wrong. Akaroa. I was probably wrong too, but that's all right. <laughs> See, you can't pick on me. I'll pick back on you. Uh, one, any Aussie that's watching this, the actual township, I'll tell you, go there. It is one of the prettiest towns uh, to go to. It's very, very different, but uh, yeah, a very pretty part of the world. But it's going to be ran at, now I'm not even going to try and say the tra racetrack that it, it is at. At Mott. Thank you very much. That's I'll, I'll use that, but what's the official race name of it? Uh, Moshi Carrara. It's uh, Banks Peninsula Trotting Club, but their, their facilities they use. And it's a grass track. It's unique. I got to see it uh, last time when I was not at a uh, race meeting, but um, Cambrai took me there um, and showed me it. Really looking forward. Unfortunately, they lost a meeting, what, two weeks ago? Uh, they lost a meeting two weeks ago because of the rain. Uh, touch wood, there's no rain on the radar for this weekend. So really looking forward to it. Strong fields, big fields. I'm looking forward to these 18-horse fields, or I think they're the 15 because there's a couple of emergencies. But um, it's a good meeting in itself. It is, it is. And headlined by the Country Cup, which has... I think 18 odd so uh yeah the Akaroa Cup should be a great race before we get into this uh New Zealand meeting um unfortunately Sunday Sun won't be going around in the trot um he's just gone amiss which probably robs it of a little bit of um the class then you have Bolt for Brantz who's gone over to Australia and uh, I don't think he's going okay over there as well um uh, <laughs> but still still great depth the depth in the fast class trotters, I think through Bolt for Brands and what he's doing in Australia is really on showcase because, you know, when you've got horses like Majestic Mountain um, and Sunday Sun and Bolt for Brands, and there's not much between any all three of those horses. Depends on one, a little bit of the distance um, and a little bit of luck in running, if you like, in, as to how they are. Um, from a trotting person as I am and a person who loves the industry, uh, you guys must be wrapped with the depth of the trotters. Yeah, we are. It's something that, potentially haven't always had we've always had say one or two top liners and under that it's it's just been okay but no the the quality of them lately has been unbelievable it's been making great races we will skim over that race pretty quickly but we will start off so the first race on the sunday is at twelve fifteen new zealand time so it's 10 quarter past 10 aussie time so a lot of the aussies can sit back there and watch uh that race we won't uh dwell too much on that is there anything you found uh you wanted to highlight in that race there camp uh, number four, Celtic Spirit for uh, for Ben Hope and trainers Greg and Nina it was super at the Cup Day trials and really proved that in Cup Week, absolutely smashed them. So really interested to see how that goes first up. It's a really nice horse and I think it'll have a nice future. I'll give a tease out too. I'm going to catch up with Nina uh, either this afternoon or tomorrow when I'm not 100% sure on uh, where, where I'm going and when I'm going. There. I might be tomorrow actually. Uh, Nina doesn't know that if she's watching this already. But yeah, we will be catching up uh, with her. Really keen to find out because they've got a big stable and a good stable of trotters. Right, race number two, Commodore Hotel. 
cannot recommend it enough. That is exactly where I stay uh, last time and this time. First of the aces, and I have seen the trophies. Cam, we are meant to have one of the trophies here in front of us just to tease people to how good they were, product placement and the likes. I'll, I'll put it into the show. Don't worry about that. Uh, Ace of clubs uh, for the two-year-old Colts and Geldings uh, trotting event. Uh, how do you see this race playing out, mate? There's a little bit of intrigue, a couple of horses with limited race experience and then a couple that have got uh, well and truly got the runs on the board. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, you've got some really, really nice trotters that have kind of been there, done that. Uh, like Halberg's being placed at the top level. Uh, Gold Bullion uh, had defeat for the first time last start, but lost no admirers. It was He went super. And then, in, uh, of course, last start, winner and switch on off the back row, win a New Zealand record. So uh, yeah, there's, no, there's no shortage of depth, and it's going to be a very interesting race. Do you have a tip in it? Oh, it'll take too long the way he was going there. Rightio, race race number three, the Avon City Ford. Uh, for second of the eight, this is the Ace of Diamonds. Um, whoever wins this trophy is going to be very, very happy. Millwood Nike for mine. I, I was blown away by how impressive she was when I was here for Cup Week. Um, interviewed Mark afterwards, and uh, she's not planning on travelling. She's going to stay here in New Zealand because there's plenty of good races on offer. This, this is one of them. Um, but, uh, yeah, she's a very, very exciting filly. Nothing special, if you like, to look at. Just lovely to, to look at, like, but just all racehorse, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, like, um, I'm no expert, but she, to me, she just looks like a three-year-old almost already. She's just so big and robust and, and strong, and the way she covers the ground, you can you can see why she's seven from seven, and with the draw, it's pretty hard to not see her going eight from eight, yeah. Um, the Stonewall team, um, I think they finished... But what uh, second back to fifth chasing a home the other day um, they're probably you know they're, they're obviously the main danger and there's quite a few um, Kalua Flyby I know is owned by Woodlands that's the reason and it goes around the Woodlands colours don't worry about me I can drop product placement any time but I want to say a, a big shout out to those guys and well done for $100 I think it's every place kit. It's not just every winner, isn't it, um, that they get donating to the Horse Ambulance um, Fund um, and that right through the month of December, which I think is just huge, and I think well done to those guys. Absolutely. Yeah, this meeting here should be massive for the Horse Ambulance Trust because uh, the entry is free, but uh, there is a gold coin donation for those that wish to for the Horse Ambulance Trust, and then what yeah, uh, Stonewall's doing here is just, unbelievable it's great it's great cause to get behind and it's one of those things you never want to use it and you never know when you're gonna need it but the day you do you're pretty bloody glad they're there can give a little tease too they're going to be in australia very very shortly um i actually had to use my own float the other day for one of ours and it was brought up then that they have been in talks with um you guys over here so which is really exciting and i think well done um the kiwis ahead of the curb if you like um as far as that goes right um pro pro uh, pro nature Pro Nature is how you actually say this. I wasn't sure if it was a spelling mistake or not for the sponsor. Uh, Probiotic, uh, New Zealand Trotters Derby, one of the highlights. I love these uh, you know, fast-class trots um, of any sort. Uh, it was great to see a little mate of mine, Highgrove, back, to, back into the winner's circle the other day. But there's some real talent um, in this race. I don't think the barrier draw is anything special for Highgrove either, is it? Well, it's interesting because he's following out his biggest competitor in hot trot. So I guess Sam's got the option here. Does she hand up and bury him away three fence or does she just try beat him for speed and, and hope that she, he can't catch him up the lane? It's, it's going to make it very, very interesting. And Congrazia loved drawing so handy too. And, and too, as she proved how good she was last start in a very tough win. So it's, it's actually a cracking wee derby field. We can give you the uh, the scoop, or it won't be by the time this goes out, but double delight, Tony Hurley, he's coming back, which adds to this carnival, and it improves the importance because he's got Bolt for Brands that's qualified um, for the Inter Dominion. They, they, he can run last, and he still qualifies for it. So um, he's decided to Josh put Josh Dickey on, another Kiwi. You Kiwis stick together over there. Uh, but he's coming back to drive double delight, who had a bit of a mishap last start, um, which doesn't figure in the form. But, um, yeah, it's a lovely horse. And uh, he... Spoke. I interviewed him the other day, and he's he's reasonably confident that everything will go right. He was a little bit of a head scratcher as to what actually happened last week, but um, yeah, she's a quality filly, and uh, that little bit of intrigue. Plus, you have Mystical Max. Now, I have to mention Mystic Max because I keep saying about my sponsors, but it's by Village Mystique, yeah. uh, and there's only two of those in the country. And uh, the other horse was a horse called Hopeful Beauty, and if you watch her, it's Shepherd and the other night. 
absolutely sensational. So that's the Harasta Trotters and their their band of Trotters, mate. I can throw them all in. Don't you worry about that. Did you? Have, who are you tipping in the in this race? I won't let you sit on the fence because I know you like these these Trotters as well. Oh, I do love my Trotters. I am a Trotty man. I'm going to go just to make it interesting. I hate the draw, but I'm going to go double delight because what she did over this is two six and what she did over two seven in the northern derby was chasing down highgrove was unbelievable seeing a filly do that against the colts was was very very good and i think with an ounce of luck she's she's going to be right there i saw her in the northern derby and uh highgrove won and he had his roller skates on he was out in front she, i think she drew terrible that night she just kept chasing i think she still got beat 20 meters or something like that but yeah I, I, she she's a chaser that's for sure oh she is absolutely and she, you won't die wondering and you know, with her breeding being a captain treacherous out of a bed, she's got that pacing speed, that turn of foot. So it's no, very exciting. The breeding's, the breeding's the odd spot about it, but it's, it's actually the good spot about it as well. The crossing, Ace of Spades, two-year-old Colts and Geldings, another of the group one, um, eight of those on the cards. And sometimes you can get race meetings that have got eight group ones and people could say, they say, oh, it's a bit gimmicky and all the rest. These are cracking fields. This is a cracker. It is, it is. And, and the way the fields have fallen... Oh, I I don't know. Like Sherlock is when I last looked was a dollar sixty favourite, and he is a very very good horse. But I think they were offering a little bit overs for Don't Stop Dreaming. He's been there and done that, and the one time he was beat, he had to be very good uh, and running second to a very very good horse in Merlin, who's gone home and isn't actually at this meeting for a wee freshen up for the big races they've got. Um, yeah, then you've got the likes of Da Vinci following out. Uh, Following out Sherlock's, that'll get a nice nice trip, and that could even lob a place at nice odds. So it's, oh, everywhere you look, you could probably make a case for most. It's fantastic. Well, even like the Stonewall horse, um, drawn seven, you know, like he's out there, he, he's going to need a lot of luck, but he's a quite high-quality horse. These horses can handle themselves anyway. Yeah, I mean, he proved that in, I think it might have been the size stakes final. He, he drew awful and stormed home for a placing. He, he's, he's a very, very quite fast horse. He's one of those horses a bit of a victim of the depth because he draws bad, puts in good runs. You look at his figure form and it's not as impressive as the others, but he just doesn't, he's just not having, the, the wheel's just not turning his way just at the minute, but he might come back as a four-year-old and people say, where's this horse come from? But uh, he's always been there, just cruel by draws. And that's the thing. It's, you could probably make that case for a lot of these horses that any other year, they'd probably be the best horse in their, in their, uh, in their crop. But it's just so many good horses, which, hey, it's a great problem to have, but... Yeah, it's, it's it's good. The depth, the depth we say about the depth, the new racing calendar, there's lots get spoken about it, but this new racing, it works. It works in Australia and it works here because you get bumper meetings like this from betting, um, punting turnover, that they're enormous. People will, will want to engage in this because there's so much intrigue, especially in Australia. There's not much on on Sunday um, in Australia, so a lot of the Aussies will be watching this high-class racing. I've got no doubt about it. But just the depth in the horses, like you mentioned Merlin there, there's not too much Sunday sun. We're not missing, and he's an old trotter anyway, which the birth date doesn't change for. But there's not a lot of the, the good horses that we're missing here. Just a couple that have been a bit strategic about what they do with them. Definitely, definitely. And, and that's the thing you see when you're talking to most people. They say for the babies, the two- and three-year-olds, this has been an absolute game-changer. Even the ones that aren't racing, just the yearlings and babies getting broken in, to them not having to have that mindset of rushing to get them up and going of, of racing early and going mm, actually I can take my time with this and have a bit of fun and yeah that it's been a massive game changer for those babies and a reason for people to get back here um I say about the hospitality that is here in New Zealand and it is always very very good and you guys look after me right you mentioned there before about the two-year-old trotting fillies the Canterbury Spa and Pool Ace of Hearts for the two-year-old fillies Interesting race. When you get two old trotting fillies, um, the form can be a bit mixed because a lot of the time they've been the girls have been taking on the boys. So again, figure form doesn't quite look as good because they're taking on the you know, different sex. They come back against their own sex, and all of a sudden they start to show up. Uh, horses like Luby Lil uh, and the, and those have been taking them on. Little Smokey that you've got here. Um, like I know, even in the form, you look at the horse like the Ivy League. Um, but the form comments here turn around and say respect the colours. Like because the f figure form doesn't look anything good, but being in the pool now and stable, um, and the likes. What's your selection here, and um, how do you find this race? I'm going to go a little bit off the map here and say she's Bella. Um, I know the Ferguson Rogerson team wouldn't probably bring her down unless they thought that she was a chance. Um, I she's a beautiful looking animal and covers the ground well and I, she's got the draw 
I just think that if they wanted to, over the 1980, roll forward and get handy, she would be right in it for a long way. You're going against high energy. Oh. I reckon last week you, we did this, you went against a high energy too. I just thought I'd put, put that out there just in case Ken Bracken's watching this. You know, like he can give you a clip behind the ears. You'd be able to catch her this week too. You'd be able to give you a clip behind the ears as you walk past. Oh, look, look. Yeah, yeah. High energy's a top horse and probably won't be beat, but, you know, where's the fun in tipping dollar sixty shots? <laughs> tip winners <laughs> tip winners are not getting a clip behind the ear mate it's all good right oh, sunshine stars uh, of course the guys at Queensland uh, it's a crossover I do work for Nutrient as well and the sunshine stars is in March I'm going to go 11 and 12 actually off the top of my head but um, that's a new sales that's going to happen in uh, Queensland and they're looking to get plenty of people there New Zealand derby what a field Fortunate enough to have been here for Cup Week, which turned out to be a Cup fortnight for myself, and uh, everyone says a great junket. One of the highlights was to actually go and have a look at a horse like Republican Pilot and Merlin, um, up close and personal. There's nothing to him yet. What there is to him is just all racehorse. He, he turned the tables on um, Akuda last start. Can he do it again this start? Well, he's got the draw to do it, and um, he proved last start how tough he was. Like He just didn't, didn't lay down. Halfway down, he, he probably was entitled to get a wee bit tired, but he just said, actually, I'm I'm every bit as good as you, and I'm going to be right here. So I, I think he can win. He's still going to need a bit of luck because uh, with the distance being 2-6 this week, he's, Akuda's got a bit more time to work into it and, and uh, get round, but I definitely think he's, he's stepped up and he's proven that Republican Party can win this. I was watching uh, his, a track side over here and they did a, a great ad well done I think I really enjoy them and the promotion you guys do for the end for those sort of horses it looked like Akuda almost headed him last week and he come back and fought back and beat him um, you don't realize that until you watch you know a couple of those replays like he is super tough take nothing away from Akuda because he's been racing the you know the New Zealand free-for-allers uh, and the likes and, uh, and that again we talk about how this calendar changes it's just so exciting to see these couple of horses coming through it was a year ago, everyone was saying the depth in the fast class horses is so ordinary here in New Zealand. Well, geez, they're changing their tune now, aren't they? Oh, they are, absolutely. Yeah, and, and in that derby, you've got a horse like Beach Bull who was placed in the Northern Derby um, and unfortunately went amiss. But then thanks to the birth date change, he's had time to come back and uh, and make his way back for the New Zealand Derby down here. So you know, he, he can't be dismissed either, a horse like him. I love the comments. That's why I just skimmed back there. If anyone can explain to me, we'll know how many people watch this because someone will come up and explain to me. But doesn't mind, this is uh, comments for beach, uh, beach Ball, doesn't mind serving it up at times and the best draw he's had in a while, bubbling under. We're not 100% sure what the bubbling under means, whether it's a reference to the beach ball or not, but it's an interesting comment. It is, it is. Um, yeah, I, oh, yeah, I can't quite work it out. Uh, it's just bubbling under the surface and, and don't quite forget about it maybe I yeah it's an interesting but hey it gets people reading it got me that's for sure okay group one uh fast class trotters are trotting free for all fortunate enough to to have been here for the dominion handicap and the amount of aussies as i will say this for you kiwis the amount of aussies that watched it were just blown away and i just said to them i said oh you should have seen the bubble you know, like the afterwards, it was just enormous how the, how that shed lit up after that Dominion handicap was just brilliant. The drive of Ben Hopes on Muscle Mountain was outstanding. Um, you've got to go back and watch it. If you haven't gone back and watched go back and watch it because it is an outstanding drive. Um, he was behind. I thought he tried just everything to keep in front of Sunday Sun, which he did. But he was actually behind and took the initiative to peel out, go around him while Sunday Sun was still trying to balance up, get in front of him then let him get back past him. And almost, well, I think he did get past him, but I mean, Sunday Sun just been a, a champion, um, but just a brilliant, brilliant drive. But Sunday Sun's not in it. Still no walkover for Muscle Mountain. Oh, it's not. And it's probably back to his pet distance of uh, being the sprint trip. Uh, but he's proven in the past that the one draw can be a wee bit niggly for him. Um, but oh, I, I think class should prevail here and and he should be too too good. Um, the IRT, fly IRT, and if I don't do it uh, properly, Nigel will tell me off uh, from Harness Racing Unhinged. We've got to make sure we look after Nigel. Uh, but the Oaks, $175,000 three-year-old Phillies Oaks, probably been a little bit cruel by the barrier draws this race with True Fantasy coming up with the uh, the ace, I suppose, the number one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, 
it hasn't helped, but in saying that, it could make the first furlong quite interesting because if they really put the foot down and just say, look, we'll try cross her and bury her away, let's see how good she is. Or, um, you know, outside of your, your short price for the win of True Fantasy, there's definitely some juicy place odds you could be playing around. It'd be great to see Jean back here. Is Jean back here, do you know, for this weekend? Oh, I, I love throwing you under the bus. You've got no idea, have you? I don't know, but I tell you what, if I had the favourite for $175,000 Oaks, I'd be flying over. Well, she's got one in the next as well, <laughs> the East West Fencing Summer Cup. Uh, Self Assured's going around. Spankham Krug, BD Joe. I'm going backwards. Henry Hubert. Is that how we say it? Because you said I'll get into trouble if I say it the wrong way. Uh, Cranbourne, Cranbourne. You guys call it Cranbourne. It is actually Cranbourne. If you live in Australia, it's Cranbourne. He's a sport. Uh, got you covered. And Evangelist. Um, terrific race. And this is only a Group 3 race. It is. It is. And actually very, very happy with the field and, and the size of the nominations. Uh, there were a couple of extra in there that uh, pulled out in the nominations. But even still, to get a crack in nine horses... And most of these, except for a couple, maybe the one, the rest of them, I think, are all aiming at going down to the $100,000 Invercargill Cup on uh, December the 17th. So uh, this will be a really good race to head into that. Yeah, it will be. And um, it's a great way to end the card at 5.34, which is 3.34 for the Aussies. So they would have sat around and had their roast lunch. That's what we do in Australia, sit back and have a roast lunch and a bit of apple pie afterwards, and they would have been able to finish the whole the whole meeting. We have life very relaxed. We don't, indeed. I want the Aussies to make sure this meeting is on, as in, as is also, yes, on the Saturday. Um, but it is great bumper, bumper meeting. You spoke there about the 17th. Um, that's a huge meeting coming up as well, and we want to make sure people are aware of that. Um, and again, good excuse for the Aussies to jump on a plane and get out of here. Definitely, definitely. So that's another one that's all been part of the birthday change. We've pumped a bit of money uh, down into Southland, give them a group one for the nice horses, uh, let the horses go on a bit of a road show around the country and, and let different people around the country see them. And we've also put on a really nice group three for the Trotters, uh, plus some um, couple of two-year-old races. So it should be a really, really good race meeting. And a good way of showcasing some of the talent down there that probably doesn't get their chance up here and definitely not up north that often. Definitely, like it's uh, it's always because they don't have those nice races. It's always Southland uh, horses and trainers and drivers that have to travel. So it, it's really nice for them to just have something on their back doorstep to uh, yeah showcase how good they are. Cam, thank you. Going to catch up with the girls um, and talk about the cadet series, which I like the cadet um, spin off of. You know, well, we could just call them juniors over there, but it's great that the cadets um, and the upcoming um, announcement of the cadet of the year um, and how that all, all works. Plus, also Cambrai at the end, just talking about uh, with the online catalogue for NZB being released and also uh, Gavel House um, up and going as well. But um, the New Zealand show, I must say a huge thank you to the guys at Harness Racing New Zealand uh, for giving me the time um, and also always making me feel welcome. So thanks very much, mate, for joining me. Always, it's a pleasure to have you here. The New Zealand show now catching up with Natalie Gamerson. How did I go with that, Nat? That's perfect, thank you. <laughs> Any chance that you're a little bit nervous about this interview? Absolutely. I teach interviews to my um, cadets, but um, I don't particularly like doing them myself. Well, they'll be scrutinising you now um, and giving you a little bit of a hard time. I've got to say, firstly, before we start too much, I'm going to sidetrack you. Um, it is Aces Week, and I did do an interview with Cam Kirkwood just there before, which uh, we will be following on to. Um, but these are beautiful, beautiful trophies. I've been able to see them all. So I'm looking forward one to this weekend. Do you look forward to the big race weekends? Absolutely. Yeah, love the races. So yeah. um, This weekend's a bumper, isn't it? It certainly is. No, that'll be really fun. Um, great weekend of racing and... Yeah, brilliant. Um, the cadets, one of the reasons I want to get on, uh, ask you about it and learning the way you know different sides of the ditch um, do something. I wasn't sure exactly how the, how the cadet. I might actually explain how the cadets work. Um, maybe not to the Kiwis because you guys will understand it, but may, more so to the Aussies as to how it, it's a pathway to getting into involved in harness racing. Yep. Okay. So um, once the young people are into the industry, so they can come into the industry through maybe kids carts or um, we run a gateway program through the high schools. But they come into the industry and they have an employer. They then, if they want to progress through the industry and become a junior driver, they have to do our cadet program, which is a New Zealand certificate in equine. So it's a three-year program, and they come along to classes, and we have practical field days, um, and we run different sessions for them um, with different speakers, guest speakers. And, um, yeah, three years, and then they graduate. And through that time, um, they'll be progressing through their licences, 
and so they go from stable hand to their trials license and then most of them will move on to their junior driver license. Can they, they become a driver through this? They don't have to wait the three years to become a driver, like they can do the, do the court and become a driver you know, after a year? Um, so our time frames are they need to have their stable hands licence for 12 months, they need to have their trials licence for 12 months also and complete a number of drives and, and a few other bits and pieces with that and then they can get their junior driver licence. I like that because I think sometimes it's very easy, especially if you've got family backing, it's very easy just to, to come into it and then potentially not see a different world if you like. You're, you're automatically involved in an in, in industry and you just become a trainer and then all of a sudden you know, you, that's the only thing you know. Yeah, absolutely. And and this is a way that outsiders can come in and progress into the industry without sort of, I guess, jumping ahead. So everybody's got the same pathway. Um, they get, I, I would imagine, access to other trainers. Um, so so at the minute, I think Carter Delgetti and a few of the others, so Carter could do everything through Dad if he wanted to, but he will, de- by this pathway, go out to other stables, see other places, potentially see places that he wouldn't have seen if he only just did it through the family. And this is what I'm putting it back to the Australians, that if you have this family background, you know, you might only stay with your family. But it's a way of showcasing everyone to everyone. Yeah, totally. So um, we get a lot, a lot of guest speakers come in, so they're trainers and drivers and industry experts, so they come in and share their time and their expertise in our classroom sessions. A lot of time we'll even go out to their properties. Um, I don't like to say COVID the word, but um, that did put a little, little bit of a damper on things for a couple of years and meant we couldn't sort of do the things that we, we like to do and, and take them out and about. But um, yep, they, we have a lot of generous speakers come in and, and talk to our cadets so that's great just gives them an insight into what other people do. You said there before then they get a certificate? Yes yeah, so um, once they've completed their qualification they they get a New Zealand um, certificate in equine so yeah. So they actually get something out of it and I would imagine along the way they learn other business maybe not skills as much but although the way you're not just in they obviously they do but they could actually see another business opportunity instead of them just saying well I'm going to be a driver and that's it, and then I'm going to become a trainer. There is so many, so many other parts of our industry that we undersell a little bit, and they get access to those. Yep. So we do try and expose them to as many other areas of the industry as we can. So um, the breeding industry, because there's qualifications in breeding, so we expose them to that. Plus we get um, our commentators come in, our um, media experts come in, and you know all those other people, f- feed merchants, um, you know, nutritionists, all sorts of people. So, yeah. Do you enjoy it? Because to me, it, it's something actually I reckon I could enjoy, but to, uh, like bringing through, you know, the, the new blood, if you like, into the industry. I love it. I've been, um, I've been here for a number of years now and, um, yeah, I really am passionate about it. I, there is nothing greater than seeing um, one of our young people come into the industry and then progress through and develop and go out and win their first race or train their first winner. And... I'm not sure if they ever listen to anything that I ever say, but it's just, it's, it's a really proud moment. I really enjoy that. Uh, they always listen. It's just they, they pick up on the things you shouldn't have said. That they, It won't be the things you did say that made sense. Um, you've got your awards night on this Wednesday night? Um, yeah, this coming Wednesday we've got our Cadet of the Year um, competition. So that is, um, we did some regional competitions in our three regions and there are three finalists plus the, the fourth person is the next highest qualifier and they are going through to the final next Wednesday. So that's a day um, of different competitions and different challenges for them. There'll be a lot of harness um, sort of challenges. They get to drive a horse, there's a vet challenge a feed challenge can't taste say too much because they um they might be watching and listening but and then we throw in a few other challenges for a little bit of fun and um enjoyment so yeah heaven forbid having fun in harness racing that you can't do those things oh we try as much as we can but yeah it maybe doesn't happen very often but yeah <laughs> it's a pity i won't be here i uh, could could actually enjoy enjoy being there at, at that part the public speaking is becoming more and more i suppose important now uh, through social media uh, and the like. it's a very very important part uh, of the kids being aware and the social media aspect of what they actually post on social medias and sometimes the repercussions that it that those sorts of things can have I imagine that's an integral part of what you teach and what you teach them to show you got your your highlights day so you've got to you know do make sure you show it in the right light and show what these kids are you can't show the show the ones that fail at something because 
you know, you don't want anyone to make out that they're, they're wrong, if you like. So it's one of these little jiggles, I suppose, that as the world expands, you say there before about COVID and, and that, everyone's shut down, but then all of a sudden everyone learnt all these extra skills. So I'd imagine that's a new frontier for yourself. I know you weren't keen on this interview. It's a new frontier for yourself that you have to, I suppose, embrace. Yes, so we've... Um Obviously, media training has always been part of our program, but now we have a race course chaplain come in and um, and we cover well-being a little bit more. And and that when I say that, that's that's also you know be aware of what's happening on social media and be aware of what you post and and be aware of what reactions that um, you know you put on social media that other people can see. So yeah, it's. You know, it's hard for them out there and um, and they have had to get better at, at their public speaking and their media training. But um, man, they're going amazing, all of the all of our junior drivers. They really are. Uh, Nat, I reckon you did all right at that. If I could say one thing to this to the social media part of it, just embrace it um, and don't worry as long as what you put up is who you are and what you are, don't put up silly stuff um, and that some people say one negative thing, you only need one positive thing, and that, that, that is one of the best parts. Nat, thanks for joining me. Well done for what you're doing. The future of the industry starts at the ground, ground level, so I think you're one of the more important parts. You can tell everyone else here that you're the most important part because you look after the ground up. But thank you very much for giving me the time. I know you weren't keen on this, but I do appreciate it. Um, and well done. And the cadets will be announced Wednesday night. Will it be announced no. or be a – oh, no. So there's a little curveball. Yeah, there's a wee curveball. So um – so we have the final next Wednesday and the winner won't actually be announced until our annual awards, which is in March, the Harness Racing New Zealand annual awards. So they actually have to hang around till March and wait for that. But um, hopefully I'll give them sort of their day will be fun enough that they'll have something to talk about over the next couple of months. And there's enough racing on over the summer period that they won't worry too much. And then they come along to our um, awards night and uh, yeah, the, the winner gets crowned there. That's a curveball and a half. They've got to wait three months. Yeah, they do. Well, Christmas is in the middle, so that, that sort of, as I said, they're busy with their racing. But um, with the timelines, we needed to have the final competition, and because so much is involved with it, um, in December, and, um, and then with all the racing, sort of January, February, yelling sales, and then, yeah, it was just the easiest time to have the final. And the, the winner's just always been announced at the awards, so, yeah. Three representatives here very quickly in the junior drivers um, into the Dominion Series in Australia. You'd be proud of that. Um, we're not going to go through the, all the drivers or everything else like that, but for New Zealand to have three representatives, um, one I would imagine you're looking forward to it, but it's, it's a great, another stepping stone, something for these young kids to aim for because I know they're, they're going to experience some wonderful things while they're over in Australia. Yep, absolutely. Um, you know, our juniors are going great and, and you know, they have a lot of success in that that Australasian Junior Drivers Champ. So, um, you know, good luck to them all. And, yeah, I, I look forward to watching. Nat, thank you. Lovely. Thanks, Will. Georgie Bolton joins me now on the New Zealand Harness Racing Show. Firstly, welcome. Hi, Paul. How are you? Good. Fair to say you're a little bit nervous. I am a little bit nervous. I, I like talking, but with a microphone and you in my face, it's probably not my favourite thing. No, that's been said by a few people. I think Nat might have said it just before as well. Hero, um, we have Hero in Australia. Um, you have Hero here in New Zealand. Basically, um, the rehoming of standard breads um, and try and find a life for them after, after racing. Yeah, we do. Yep. So the Hero program here in New Zealand is run along the same concept as the Hero program in Australia. Um, we jumped on the bandwagon, so we share the brands, um, the logos, and the same, essentially the same process. Um, giving standard breeds that have come off the track a life after racing. Um, it's, it's, I think part of that's very, very good. Um, and it's also good that you're separate because the, the brand itself, Hero, um, can be associated with, uh, with you know, rehoming harness racing horses. And the logo there, and I'll actually put the logo um, up on the top corner. I think it's, it's, a, good, it's a good logo because it actually is harness horses. Um, it's a harness and a horse going through. Your background very quickly, are you from a harness racing background? Um, no, I'm not actually. My background is in thoroughbred racing. So I used to work on thoroughbred studs here um, and up in the North Island in Cambridge. And I was lucky enough to go to Ireland on a scholarship. So um, I'm involved heavily in horses I compete as well myself riding eventing and show jumping um, and I'm, I'm the hero manager but when we get a big wait list I I take a couple horses on myself and break them in which is really cool to get that ground level um, feeling of how the program actually works so I, I actually like that because and one of the things Campbell's comments tries to do is actually break down I suppose the the barriers if you like of you know standard breeds 
thoroughbreds, quarter horses, stock yeah. horses. I think they're all horses. They're all equine. And the reason we do them is because we get so much out of them. A horse at the end of the day is a horse and they are so cool, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. Like a, like you said, a horse is a horse. Um, and the standard bred breed has so much to offer. You know, they've got such a level-headed brain. Um, I ride thoroughbreds. I love them dearly, but they can be a real pain in the ass. But, you know, the standard breeds are so level-headed. Um, they're resilient, they're tough, and they are perfect for the everyday rider out there um, through to, to, to ones that want to be competitive, you know? So they really are very versatile. Um, I, I keep saying they're tattooed. Um, they got, you know, they're stamped, they're stamped for success, basically, and it's yeah. a tattoo. Everyone wants a tattoo. There are a lot of girls, I don't know about New Zealand, there are a lot of girls in Australia that actually, their first standard bread, they've got their tattoo of the, of the brand, brand on them. So I, I like the brand. The crazy horse, but he's, exactly. But I actually like the brand. They are such a cool horse, and they can be yeah. a cool horse for so many reasons. For your first horse, you get, but they can also be more than that, can't they? Oh, a hundred percent. We um, a perfect example of that is we had the fixer come through the Hero Program. So he obviously won the 2018 New Zealand Cup, um, and he was a champ to deal with throughout the program. Um, Taryn Jones educated him, and he's gone to Shannon Armour down south. And she, her husband is a harness trainer, so um, fully involved. But she is now out winning multiple champions in the show ring on Tosti, as he's affectionately known. So he's just a, one example of a champion on the track that has gone through to be a really successful horse at, at the high level, you know, in the show ring. So th they're cool. Yeah. How does it work over here? In, like in Australia, we actually have standard bread rings. They actually have their own standard bread show in Bendigo of all places where I live, and I didn't go there because I didn't know it was on, but that's okay. Um, do you have standard bread only shows over here, or do they have to compete against all the other horses at the shows? Um, we do. Sorry, getting distracted by Nelly. We do have um, standard bread rings, so we have sections um, solely for the standard bread. And really popular now you know there's some quality horses in there they're getting great numbers um there's a liver mole standard bread um section as well which is really cool that they've come on board um and every now and then you get the standard bread that will go out and compete against the others um in the open and novice rings which is it's just cool to see anyone wondering natalie did a big salute just then it distracted the pair yeah. of us as soon as we said we said about that when we yes yeah, she, she said the she was, she was questioning whether I knew the right answer come on <laughs> she, she used to work together you didn't want to come on together it would have been more fun it would have been would have ended up anyway um challenges um I'm sure there's always challenges um with trying to rehome not every horse is rehomeable um yeah. it's something that gets spoken a lot do you enjoy that side of it um is that a bit of the frustrations I suppose um I'm fairly strict at the start um on the criteria of the horses coming into the program it just makes it really easy um it makes the process easier, you know. So we will go out and vet the horse. They need to be sound, sane um, and saleable, essentially. They will go to one of the educators. So we've got 10 educators throughout New Zealand. The majority of them are based in Canterbury, um, which aligns with the horse population, obviously. We've got three girls down in Invercargill and two up in Auckland, Waikato area. So the horses will enter the program. They'll get eight weeks of schooling and educating. Um, so... Every girl's a little bit different. So some we've got one girl who she's actually barrel races, so she does a whole heap of cowboy challenges and stuff like that with them, which is cool. Um, so they'll yeah, they complete their eight weeks with the girls and then they come up for sale. Um, anybody involved with horses knows that selling is the hardest part um, and just trying to match them with the right home. So yeah. and, that, and that's the important part. The other thing, just saying that we do, you know probably as an industry we need to be aware of like you said then about the girls like it'd be great to have some guys get involved in the rehoming and the rehoming of them it's it's a similar thing in Australia although there are quite a few guys that um, do it but it's quite a, a, a weird little thing yeah. in, a, in a way if you're a young young guy the best way to meet ladies is um, <laughs> you know train a couple of horses but it is it is one of those ones I, I find a little bit strange and you just said then you know basically all girl re, yeah, rehomers and in, in our hero program at the moment they are all or woman, um, but we would absolutely love if a, a young man were to come on board. There's some fantastic horsemen out there. Um, so, yeah, if there's anybody out there that wants to become a hero, hero educator, holler at us. All right, don't don't try and do it. Don't try and do an interview. She'll say she'll say no to the interview, but she does very well. Georgie, thank you, thank you for joining me, and well done to the hero, um, hero New Zealand. Is that what it's called? Or just hero and just hero, yep. just hero. hero. and um, well done for everything that you're doing. Thanks for joining me. Um, keep up the good work because it is the most integral part of our industry that we need to, to prosper. Between that, Nat with the cadets starting off 
finding a home for these beautiful animals after racing. Um, it's so important. You guys have got, you know, got a lot going on. So thank you very much for joining me and well done for everything you do. Thanks, Paul. That's great. And what a delight it's been. New Zealand show now catching up with NZB's Cameron Bray. Hello, Cameron. Paul, how are you? Welcome back to New Zealand. Great place to be. Great place to be. Caught up with Cam Kirkwood and a couple of other people uh, just before. But as always, good sponsors of mine, NZB. Um, fair bit going on all of a sudden now, hotting up to to yearling sale time. Yeah, well, we're re really a month. Well, we're not even a month. We're sort of three weeks before Christmas, and then uh, you know you get into January. We're sort of only a month. You know, re and realistically, a couple of eight, ten weeks away from the sales, um, effectively. Um, so, yeah, there's a bit count on, organising tour, yielding tours, and uh, we're away to Australia next week for canvassing in Australia, West Australia. So, yeah, there's plenty going on. Catalogue online, we'll talk about those other trips in a sec, but the catalogue is now online and um, people can go and access it. Yeah, uh, the catalogue's been online since the start of the week, Monday I think it was. So, yeah, you just hit the NZB standard bread and it's all there, the whole catalogue. Um, the actual physical printed catalogues uh, should be in one of its last days of printing today or tomorrow. So... We expect that to be out and about by middle of next week. Um, and if you haven't, by middle of next week, received something, you know, uh, reach out and we'll sort you out. Hopefully the Aussies can get one before and as long as it gets sent to us. Yeah, well, they'll be sent and the, the, they've told us that the, the, the delivery times have freed up a little bit. Um, we've, we've got a few things in place to get them to Australia a little bit faster. So um, uh, to try and avoid the headaches we had last year, especially with bulk catalogue delivery, we're going to uh, special air courier them this year just straight away rather than you know, realising uh, three weeks later they hadn't arrived, so then we have to do it. So they'll be there nice and early. Let's go. Um, numbers, how do they look this year? Pretty much bang on the same as last year. Um, we, 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 we're within two or three. And that's encouraging? Yeah, it is. It is encouraging. Um, the dynamics about the same. We've got a good trotting session again. Um, and, you know, we might be slightly less in the North Island, but we've sort of made up for it a little bit in the South Island. But it, it, it very, really changes. Um, I think we'll see some changes in the next few years. Uh, but at this stage, we're, we're, we're holding firm. Um, the trotters, you said there before about the trotters being the same. And uh, last year down here on the South Island, for some reason, whatever it was, Father Patrick's weren't popular. Uh, people weren't keen on him. Sit back now, look at the results. Well, they trifected the race the other day. But the growth of the trotter, and like I'm from Australia, I keep explaining to people, especially in Australia, the way that, that as Duncan McPherson says, the herd population is improving all the time. Um, you know, it's, it's an exciting time for the trotters. I know sometimes they're going to take a hit, but for mine, that's one of the growth areas, if you like, of the, of the um, yielding sale catalogue. Yeah, the, yielding sales. Sorry, full stop. It is in numbers. Uh, we just now need the now need the buyers to catch up to it, and 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 that that is purely by demand. So, you know, when we look at it, it comes back to racing, and then what they're racing then for. So, if there's a return for them, then yes, they'll jump into it. Um, we sort of have seen this, geez, going back six, seven, eight years ago now, when we actually identified a trotting session, come out of sort of necessity here in Canterbury because we just don't have the facility to maintain have have the whole lot on the complex at once. So what it does do is it allows us to get you know 60 or 70 horses onto the complex, get them sold, so then we can bring in the last day's horses onto the complex. Um, so it is definitely a growth area because we went from selling originally the first sale we had of the trotting session was about 40, now we're out to 65 odd. Um, and again, yeah, we had a we had a, a catalogue last year where over a third of them were sired by one sire, um, which is never a great thing because they have then you have choice, you can pick which ones you like by the sire. Uh, and, and I think again, we just need to balance out with the breed, with with the demand of, of buyer. Yeah, no, but um, it's funny how it works because they just seem to be winning everything those ones oh, at the yeah, time. So yeah, yeah they're going yeah. really good. Uh, Gavel House, number Sisibsis. Yeah, that word I'm trying to get out. Yep, I didn't put the microphone under your mouth, so it sounds like I said it. Um, of NZ B um, catalog is going, and the next one's going online now. Yeah, it goes on tonight. Yeah, it'll go live tonight at five o'clock. I think there's about nine or ten there or something like that. So, uh, yeah, it's just taking away doing its thing each year, uh, each week, uh, each fortnight, I should say. Um, uh, there's a few broodmares, there's a few racehorses, etc. So, yeah, it's it's a, it's a it's an integral part of our business now. You know, we're selling anywhere from ten to twenty odd horses a fortnight. So, yeah, it's good. There's always quality, like Mystical Max going around in the Derby. Um, he was purchased through there for not an over, not not a lot of money. I think nine thousand dollars. Am I right? Yeah, nine and a half or something. I think. You know, we've we think it was runners in, in Bathurst last night. We, we've had we've got horses all over the place now that are graduates of the, of that sale. So yeah, it's all about finding a level, and, and it's a great market tool. You know, you don't have to wait for a sale. Once upon a time, we used to have to wait for two points of the year, really. Um, so 
now if, if, if you want to um, trade a horse on, you've got literally a, a week to wait. As an Aussie, I'm jealous of it because I think it works really, really well. We don't have anything like that. Hopefully in the future we might. Who knows? But uh, to access that, um, I'm going to go throw you under the bus. Is it Gavel? What is it? Gavel, Gavel House Standard Bread or something along those lines? Just go to gavelhouse.co.nz and then I'll bring up the, the, the actual homepage for the whole thing. You can then select through and find the Standard Bread section from there. Um, or if you want to buy a thoroughbred, you can buy a thoroughbred. Or you want to buy a real good one, you can go to Gavel House Plus. So there's nothing on there at the moment. But, like, you know, we only last week had a 12.5% share of Very Elegant on there, the Melbourne Cup winner. So, like, it's a, it's a huge part of our business now. If I'm any good, I would have put the banner across the bottom of this cam, which I will do. There's no problems there. We know, we know the answer to that question, though. Just quickly, Inner Dominion's on in uh, Melbourne next Saturday night, and yourself and James are going to be across there. But as you said, also canvassing pe uh, clients and that. If anyone's watching this, wants to get in touch with you guys, either about horses potentially in the sale and that, make sure they catch up with you in Victoria, but then you're also heading to Western Australia. Yeah, so uh, we, we, we were sort of a bit of a hit and run for Victoria. We were there earlier on with you back in the in sort of late winter. So, yeah, we'll go via the Inter-Dominion final uh, and then we head to Perth for a week or so, but over a week. So uh, anyone in WA wants to reach out, just give me a ring or an email or something and uh, we'll, we'll catch up with you. And at the minute, you're going to be at Bendigo on the 9th the night before as well. So an all-trotting night, actually. So uh, dual code and all-trotting night. But any any Victorians especially that want to catch up, but guys from the Riverina, it's not that far to Bendigo. If they want to get in and have a face-to-face -face conversation with you, you guys will be there, yourself and James. Yeah, and like even the greyhound people, they want me to sell a dog or well, we can we can sell a greyhound afterwards or something. No drama. It is a dual code meeting. Don't you worry about that. There'll be, there'll be a lot going on. We will be live, actually, on uh, Campbell's comments too. So... I might have to get, have some entertainment and get James on. That'll be a bit of fun and let him tell one of his stories. Yeah, he's a good, good, good joke teller. <laughs> yes, indeed. Cam, thank you. Um, don't forget to go to NZB Santa Bread um, for all the, the yearling sales and that. And uh, thank you very much, mate. And I'll uh, catch you in a week. You will. Thank you.